What Kiki Palmer is going through right now is exactly what I was talking about in the Pamela Anderson video. And we really need to talk about how much pregnancy and just having children puts women in danger of domestic violence. First of all, this is honestly one of the best Halloween costumes I've ever seen. And yet looking at it now, it reminds me of how incredible survivors are. Because if you go and look at her Instagram feed, knowing what we know now, it's so familiar how people going through violence, but especially women, can still carry on, can still be this creative, this fun, this funny, this full of light while going through a nightmare behind closed doors. That's something, like when I was reading the details of her story, I'm like, oh God, it all lines up. I swear, it's almost as like men who abuse women. Read a handbook or something because so many of the same things line up across the board. Sometimes the smallest details are so accurate. Even if you don't have the same background, you're not in the so same socioeconomic, you can have nothing in common with another survivor and yet tell the same story. And yet other contexts, other intersections still make survivors experience vastly different. So I wanna talk about some of the similarities and then the differences. So I've talked about this a lot about like hobo schedules and just men, oftentimes men who are not as successful as their partners end up being abusive. Like, like Kiki Palmer has, look at all, this is just like a very small summary of all the amazing stuff she's achieved already. And she's so young. She's, I mean, she's even, Time Magazine named her one of the most influential people in the world. And that was in 2019. That's four years ago. She's been nominated for Emmys, Screen Actor. It's like, at such a young age. When you try to find out like all the stuff that he's done, you know, fitness, played football, currently pursuing a career and received a certificate in broadcasting. She dated down and so many women date down. Like my, my abusive ex who almost unalived me was uh, such a loser. Didn't even have a driver's license. Didn't have anywhere to live. Literally had a backpack and a hammock and a banjo like a cartoon character. <laughs> Rode the rails, right? He thought so highly of himself for somebody who had nothing going on. And so of course, men like this are really attracted to successful women because they want what we have. They're jealous of us. They want to be successful by proxy, but at the same time, they're so threatened by our success that they then go out to try to destroy the very person that they're so jealous of because we are a reminder of them that they are not enough and they know they're not good enough for us. So they probably try to bring us down, right? So of course he was critical of what she had to wear. Men who are critical of what you have to wear and try to police what you wear. And this is why women were saying when this tweet came out, she was wearing, you know, a sexy outfit. This right here is like serious purity culture, uh, misogynistic red pill kind of talking point. This like, oh, you're a mom. So you're not, you know, a lot of men who are violent have this like really hard time understanding how a woman can both be a mother and schmegual. Like Elvis. Elvis had this problem too. And that's why a lot of men who grow up in the church are terrifying. I mean, in his profile on Instagram, um, all he says in the description is God fearing. I do not want a man who's afraid of God. Men who are afraid of God tend to be abusive men. Because if they're afraid of daddy, guess who they're gonna take that out on? I don't want a man in my life who worships an abusive father. That's why the church is so closely tied to so much abuse that happens to children, to women, to boys, to, to everybody. But they use men, especially, to carry out that violence, keep women in line. So women keep giving them babies and all their free labor. But even look at some of these others talking points he said. <sighs> a man of the family. Men like this always love to call themselves family men you know, to, uh, accuses her of attention seeking. Cause men who are abusive think they own you. This is about control. This is about their insecurity. And this is about them being pissed that they don't own you. How dare you wear sexy clothing? How dare you threaten my representation? I have standards and morals. Yeah, right, you, you beat up your girlfriend in front of your kid, but you have morals and standards. It's always projection. It's also interesting because she talks in interviews before about how she doesn't really do relationship stuff online. She doesn't didn't really like to talk about her relationship stuff for the public eye, that she was more protective of that. And that's why I find it interesting that she went public with their relationship. 
allegedly, you know, they, they met at like a Memorial Day thing, which is the end of May. They went public with their relationship in August. This is just purely speculation on my part, but a man who uh, is not famous and is nothing compared to you in terms of his career might want, might pressure you to be public about dating him because he's gonna get famous by proxy, right? Now, my ex, I was not eager to share our relationship online. He changed his Facebook status without talking to me into in a relationship with Melanie Hamlet. And so I was like, oh crap, okay, I guess we're doing this. Now all of a sudden I had to go public with something I wasn't really sure if I wanted to talk about publicly, which is crazy because that's what I do for a living is talk about my life. <laughs> but something about this relationship seemed, I don't know, I, I intuitively knew it wasn't good, but he kind of forced my hand. And so then you can see, like she says, like at the end of the day, this is somebody that's important to me, so why not? And the only reason why I'm talking about this is maybe this was her decision. But so many things that women do in these relationships is that we justify things, whether they're our, our idea or someone else's idea. We justify things all the time that we're like, ah, partly because we have to. And if you're as famous as her, like I can't imagine that level of pressure of her enduring all of this and then having to be out in the public, having it all put together. And then as a black woman, the pressure to have it all put together is exponentially greater. Because of white supremacy culture and all the things that are obviously gonna judge black women way harsher than someone like me. I also wanna point out some of the other things that she listed that he'd done. He took her diaries. My ex stole the most valuable thing that I had. 10 years worth of photographs. He ha I had a Ziploc with all my SIM cards and not only was this a source of my work, because I use photographs to help me remember things, sceneries, people, environments, situations, now especially as I'm getting older, and sentimental reasons. My entire life, all my travels, all my relationships, my friendships, everyone I've ever met was in that, zip, was in that Ziploc bag. I know I probably should have protected it more. That's the one thing he stole. And he, he basically took that so I'd have to see him again. I gotta tell you all that story because that story of how I got that back was absolutely nuts. Um, prescription eyeglasses. He took those, he stomped on them, she can't see. If you can't, when I can't see in the morning without my uh, contacts, I'm like panic because I can't even figure out where my pants are. If you're with an abusive man and he takes your glasses, how vulnerable are you? Taking the car key so she can't leave. And this one right here, I've talked about this a lot. Men who threaten to unalive themselves if you leave, those are abusive men. Get out. Those men, are always abusive. They may never touch you, but they're abusive. I cannot stress this enough. Any man who holds unaliving himself over your head is abusing you. And they know that that works. My boyfriend, the day I tried to break up with him, he threatened to jump off the bridge all day. Like he, he, he literally even faked his own suicide in the end to try to get back at me. I can't stress how important this part is. And they weaponize men's mental health crisis to keep women in dangerous situations that end up killing us. The other thing that I found really sad was that, but if you go back on our Instagram, there's a whole video of him being so cute with the baby. God, I remember that level of delusion. I can't imagine what it's like if you have a baby with an abuser. So desperately wanting to believe that this man, that this is who he is. Because this is who he is in these moments. But he also could unalive you. Women are already like groomed by society to be mothers to men, which is inherently the problem. And men think that we should take care of them and be their moms. But then when they become fathers, all of that is even more amplified. As somebody who has a lot of my own father issues. My ex had a daughter and the way he talked about her daughter, his daughter, who he literally never saw or paid child support to, like he was a terrible father. But the way he talked about her is one of the things that pulled me in. I was like, oh, he's a good dad. No, he's a terrible dad. But he made me think he was a good dad. And so many women desperately want to be with men to either heal some of their own dad issues or just at the bare minimum. To see a good father is such, it does something to women. But this is the part I want to focus on how dangerous pregnancy is for women. Domestic violence is the number one leading cause of death of pregnant women as of 2022. Let that sink in. U.S. women are more likely to be unalive while pregnant or right after giving birth than any of the other three things that lead to their deaths. And giving birth is one of the most traumatizing things a person can ever do. Once you understand the root of domestic violence is not anger or mental health or substance abuse, but it's about power to control someone, then it makes sense. It's also about in 
entitlement. And domestic violence is even worse for black women, not only because of their fear of what's going to happen to their partners because of racism and police brutality, but what will happen to them if they report it. And yet so many black women have no way out. Indigenous and other women of color too, especially black and indigenous women. Black women are more likely to be prosecuted or incarcerated while trying to navigate violent situations. 51% of black women homicides are related to DV. Now luckily, because of being famous and having money, Kiki Palmer may be safer. The fact that all eyes are on her right now and more importantly on her ex right now might be the the only thing keeping her safe and yet he still had the audacity to post this. Now survivors know exactly what this is especially survivors with children and I don't have children. This is what I've learned from fellow survivors is that men will use the court system and all kinds of systemic power to screw you look at like britney spears her ex is living the best life and he's now in hawaii that he can keep um, this is far as i gotta do more research from what i understand he even moved to hawaii so he could keep getting child support because the age is older there or whatever there are so many examples of successful women having babies with men who are way beneath them, who are, who are parasites on these women, who want access to their money and their power and their bodies and all of the things that come with the, the amazing life they've made for themselves. And then they have children with these women. Don't even marry them. But the child now means you have access for at least 18 years. And more importantly, if that woman is wealthy, money. Some men will use the court system to take every penny. And like this tweet talks about that is in reference to that photo. Kiki put a restraining order to keep him away. And dude posted, love you son, see you soon. Do folks not get what he is saying? And if you go to this tweet and see the comments, if you know, you know, that was a warning shot. And then his brother tweeted some, something so ridiculously offensive, calling her the abuser. I think he's deleted it since now. Um, you can look it up. And Kiki Palmer's mother made her own video saying that she had spoken to the brother about the abuse like an, a year earlier. So if you do the math, it lines up. The abuse started or was happening while she was pregnant. A lot of men will hide who they are until they're, until the point of no return and pregnancy or marriage, but especially pregnancy, gives them that moment. There is no turning back. Once you are linked to a man with a child, you will spend the rest of your life having to deal with that man or trying to hide from that man or trying to protect your finances from that man. You are forever linked to that man. And the mind fork, I can't even imagine, of loving your own child so much and that you share that with someone who hates you so much? I honest, I don't know. I don't. I can't imagine that level of pain and that that inner conflict. So please protect yourself. Do whatever you can to protect yourself from falling into the trap that so many women fall into for various reasons: our social conditioning, maybe former trauma, maybe religious conditioning, maybe just lack of education, which is one reason why I make these videos. A lot of women don't even know what to look for. They don't even know what these men are capable of or how they do this. And they get better at it every year because the smarter we get, the smarter they get. They, you know, they adapt. Patriarchy adapts. Abusers adapt. And we have to adapt with them. Please protect yourself as best you can because all it takes is one man to make your life miserable for decades. And that trauma is something you will be living with and dealing with and healing from your whole life.